You're standing on the shores of the Ohio River, cruising north into a quiet night in Cincinnati. The construction of this Civil War relic symbolized the dawn of a new age for the United States, bridging the geographic and social divides of the Confederate self and the Northern Union. By the turn of the 20th century, the Queen City of Cincinnati had become the matriarch of Western design, inspiring world-famous imitations from the Empire State Building to the Brooklyn Bridge. To most, this region is better known as the birthplace of aviation, and since the Industrial Revolution, the visionary designs of Cincinnati's best aviators and architects relied on subtractive manufacturing machines like mills and drills to cut those designs to life. But today, at the world's number one manufacturer of aircraft engines, three-dimensional design tools have exposed the limits of those 20th century manufacturing marvels. So what's being done to bridge the gap? In an ironic twist, it's here, in the fossilized outskirts of Cincinnati, where GE Aviation is printing a revised edition of its manufacturing rulebook. We call it additive manufacturing, a 3D printing technology that allows parts, once thought impossible, to be grown from the ground up. I think what additive gives us is a whole different degree of freedom on how we think about component design. We no longer have to understand what the limitations of machining are and what the cost of those limitations are. So now we've taken many of those processes and been able to kind of blow them out with additive. That gives the designer a whole different palette of colors to paint with and truly on a whole new canvas. Since 2003, GE Aviation has tested engine components manufactured by an additive process called direct metal laser melting, where the guts of a solid metal part are grown from the ground up by a precision 200 watt laser. Those lasers melt together individually designed and ultra thin layers of powdered metal until the part is fully grown. What's pretty exciting for the additive technologies is that we believe we have the capability to produce components and alloys that would be very difficult or if impossible actually to produce traditionally. One problem additive solves is fuel nozzle coking. Traditional fuel nozzles spray fuel into the combustor at temperatures as hot as 3,000 degrees. Over time, carbon deposits form on the inside of the nozzle, degrading the efficiency of the fuel spray and the engine's durability. GE's additively manufactured fuel nozzle for the LEAP engine is grown with internal support ligaments and cooling pathways designed to eliminate fuel coking making the part up to five times more durable than its machined equivalent. Our work with the fuel nozzle has been really groundbreaking. If we can take a component, redesign it, even if it's non-traditional in its appearance, that potentially could allow us to save tremendous amounts of weight across multiple components on an aircraft engine. What was once 18 parts is now one single piece making the additive fuel nozzle up to 25% lighter than its predecessor. 19 lightweight additive nozzles will be installed in every LEAP engine we build, resulting in significant fuel savings. In many regard, we look at this technology as replacing, in some instances, traditional technologies like castings or machining and brazing and welding. Uh, one of the exciting parts about the technology is we can combine multiple components that used to be brazed or welded together and make them into one single complex unit. By 2020, GE Aviation will manufacture more than 100,000 additive parts for the LEAP and GE9X engines. In the next five years, GE will invest more than $3.5 billion in new equipment to produce advanced components, like additively manufactured blades and blisks. To meet its record production backlog, GE Aviation is developing ultra-powerful laser beams and built-in inspection processes that could increase additive manufacturing speeds up to 20 times faster than what's possible today. It's really remarkable, and this is just the beginning. We've just begun to touch the, the surface of all the potential applications that we envision additive will be able to be applied to in the future. We're talking about multiple components, multiple different alloys, and many product enhancements that we believe in the next 10 to 20 years will quite honestly revolutionize the way many parts are produced uh, for components going on to gas turbine engines. 
For generations, locals have poked fun at Cincinnati's reluctance to move on from its oldest of traditions. Mark Twain once joked that if the world ever ended, it'd be best to live in Cincinnati because the city is always 20 years behind the times. But when it comes to engineering and aviation, Cincinnati has always been on the cutting edge. And it's funny that today, GE Aviation's newest cutting edge technology requires no cutting at all.